What I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how to use the Microsoft Excel offset function. Now, the offset function is one of those things in Excel that's rarely used. But once you've started to use it and you've understood it, it's actually amazingly powerful. I use it an awful lot for doing balance sheets and monthly forecasting and all sorts of things like that. It's quite complicated though, so I'm going to try and go through this presentation as slowly and as clearly as I can. OK, I've written the syntax of the offset command up there and all the uh, parameters you need for it. And underneath here, I'm now just going to write in the offset command itself. Now, here we have the parameters that are required. We've got a reference. I've called that a start cell. And we'll set that to something. And we've got rows and columns. We're going to start off with just those three parameters. So the reference cell, I'm going to say, is this cell here. And then what I want to do is put a 1 in rows and 1 in a column. OK, and I close that bracket. Now you notice there, let's just delete that, we've got height and width we can also specify. And you see they're also in square brackets. That means they don't have to be present in this actual equation. So I'm going to close that down and return. And the answer to that equation is 4. Let me explain to you what it does. By using the offset command, it takes the starting point, I've called that the start cell, but Excel calls it the reference, and it moves it, the number of rows and the number of columns you request. So here I put 1 and 1, which means it will down, move down one row and move across one column. So the answer to that offset is 4. If I change the number of rows I'm moving down, let's say I want to move down 4, you see it goes to 447 because it's gone from there, it's gone 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1 across. And that gives us 447. We can also put values in there. So instead of saying 4, we can actually take the, take the value in the cell C2, like so. So that now if we ever change the value in C2, you see it gives us the value on row 7. Now it's not matching these numbers here, it's not like doing like a V lookup is, it's just simply going down here and it's going down seven spaces. Okay? Now, that's very powerful. Okay, you might find re places you can use this, but if we then start to look at the last two parameters, you start to see where its power really starts to come in. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a sum statement with an offset inside it. So this time we're going to use the same reference cell, A6. We're going to use the same method for working out how many rows to go down. We still want to ever go, ever go across for one column. But now we can decide how many rows to return into this sum statement. So if I put height equals 3 and width equals 1, like so, basically what it's going to do is it's going to go down 7 points, a long one, and then take the three values. So it's going to go one, two, three. So it's going to return these three cells into the middle of a sum statement. And when it does that, you see what it's actually doing is summing 885, 44, and 597, and 567 together. So again, if I change this to be one, okay, there's the value for the first three weeks because I pulled that 3 in. Let's just reference that 3 to be there. So now what I can do is I can put 1 in here. So that brings back 1 week. Put 2 in there, that brings back 2 weeks. 3 in there, 4 in there, 5 in there. So that's bringing back a 5 week average starting at, let's say, week 4. Okay, let's just check that. So what we're actually doing there just do just go in here and do a simple sum statement and we're starting at week four and we're doing five values one two three four five same answer okay but you can see I don't need to redo my equations I don't need to redo my starting points I don't need to look at the data or anything else it's calculating effectively changing my sum statement on the fly according to what was set by the offset.
So that's shown you a very, very powerful way to do moving averages, to do sums, to do all sorts of things. I use it a lot when I am looking at monthly figures. And I can select the number of months I want to look at and add all the values together. That then effectively gives me the year to date, or the month to date, or the quarter to date, or whatever I want to do. But this information here will be enough to get you started. You can download this spreadsheet and have a play with it as it is, and um, see how you get on. Good luck, it's a very powerful feature and I wish